The idea that someone is short of oxygen and they need to go to an oxygen bar to get more oxygen in their body is probably one of the dumbest ideas I've ever heard of. Unless your goal is to literally harm your body. So right now our air has about 21% oxygen in it. And if you go to an oxygen bar to get more oxygen, it'll give you about 95% oxygen. Now my first question is, why all of a sudden did humans need to go to an oxygen bar to survive? I mean, weren't we doing just fine for so long with just our normal air? Now, how much oxygen do we really need to survive? Well, the answer might surprise you. It's only 5%. We only need 5% oxygen in our air to survive. So in the air around us, we have 21% oxygen and that air will enter our lungs and that is more than enough oxygen to saturate our hemoglobin. Now, our hemoglobin is this molecule that will take this oxygen from our lungs and deliver it to all of the cells in our body. Now, when we breathe out, we're still breathing out about 16% oxygen. So really only 5% of that oxygen that we breathe in is being used. So when people say that they are short of oxygen or they're still chronically tired or they need more oxygen just to be healthy, well, that's really not the case because we're getting more than enough oxygen already. And simply adding more oxygen to the mixture is not going to help and it might actually make it worse. Now, really when people are saying they need more oxygen is they need a different molecule. They need more carbon dioxide or CO2. So a lot of people think that CO2 is this waste product because when we breathe out, we also breathe out carbon dioxide. And a lot of us think that we need to expel as much carbon dioxide as possible because it's this toxic molecule. Well, that's really not the case because CO2 is very important. It's actually what helps control our blood pH and it's also what helps deliver this oxygen to our cells. So if our CO2 levels are low, it's a condition that's called hypocapnia. When we get hypocapnia in our body, it's basically gonna constrict everything. So it's gonna constrict our breathing tubes, it's gonna constrict all of our blood vessels, and it's also gonna cause a lot of smooth muscle spasms. And the reason that everything's getting constricted with hypocapnia is because your body is trying to retain as much CO2 as possible. It's trying to constrict your breathing tubes and prevent that CO2 from leaving so that it can maintain a normal level. Because what can happen if you do not have enough CO2 is the cells in your body can die. Because again, our CO2 is what regulates our blood pH. And our pH has to be between 7.35 and 7.45 at all times. And that's a very small window. And if it goes too high or too low, then the cells in our body will die. That's why CO2 is so important. And also our CO2 is what's gonna help deliver this oxygen to our cells. So let's say we have these cells in our brain and we breathe in this oxygen, it gets attached to this hemoglobin and this hemoglobin carries it to our cells. If our pH in our body is off, then our oxygen is never able to detach from this hemoglobin and it's never able to go to our cells in our brain. And that happens when our CO2 levels are too low. If our CO2 levels are normal, then our blood pH is gonna be normal and then this oxygen is gonna be able to go to our cells. So you can see why going to an oxygen bar and getting more oxygen is not really gonna help you because yeah, you're still gonna saturate this hemoglobin and you're still gonna get oxygen into your lungs, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna to go to your cells. You really need more carbon dioxide. So there was also a study that was kind of further showing this. So they had three different groups, and in all three groups, they induced hypoxia. They gave them lower levels of oxygen. One of the groups was just a control. So they were breathing normal air, and then they lowered their oxygen levels. But the other two groups had air that was mixed with carbon dioxide. So the second group had 3% CO2 mixed into it, and the third group had 5% CO2 mixed in. And what they found is the groups that had carbon dioxide mixed into the air reacted so much better. The study was looking at people's oxygen levels in their body. And the control group, as soon as they induced hypoxia, quickly lowered their oxygen levels. And they also took a really long time to recover. But the groups that had CO2 that was mixed in their air, their oxygen levels did not drop nearly as low. And they also recovered a lot faster. So by simply adding carbon dioxide in their air, even though they were in a hypoxia condition, they were still able to maintain higher levels of oxygen. So when people say they need to go to an oxygen bar and get more oxygen, really the issue is how they're breathing in the first place. Because the way that they're breathing is that they're breathing way too fast and expelling way too much carbon dioxide. Our lungs only have one job is to exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen all day long. 
And if we're breathing too quickly, it's gonna throw off this balance. And the reality is nowadays, people are simply breathing quicker and quicker. And this has happened over the last century. If you look at the 1920s, people would breathe about five to six liters of air per minute. And after the 1950s, this is when McDonald's, KFC, and a lot of other fast foods hit the market. This is when people's breathing rates started to go up. And if you look at now, now people are breathing about 12 liters of air per minute. So what's going on? Why did all these changes happen in people's breathing? Well, the only thing that affects people's breathing is stress. Stress is what will cause a fight and flight response in our body. And this is what will cause our breathing to change. It'll make our breathing more shallow and more quicker. So there's a couple things that change in the last century. One is our diet. So a lot of people have sort of adapted to this fast food lifestyle where food has become really cheap and really easy to eat. And also a lot of the food that we eat has become really processed. It has had a lot of chemical additives, a lot of preservatives, a lot of artificial flavorings, artificial colorings. All of these things are not gonna be good for us. And all of these things are gonna evoke some stress in our body. And they're still gonna evoke that fight and flight response. So it doesn't have to be some emotional stress that's causing that fight and flight response in our body. But also nowadays, people have these imagined dangers. So stress was always meant to be very short-lived. It was supposed to be this rapid, quick response to some sort of danger. And then we get out of that danger by either fighting or flighting and then we are safe again. But nowadays, pretty much everything stresses us out. Whether we're late for a birthday party or late for a meeting or stuck in traffic, all of these things are gonna evoke that fight and flight response in our body. And in turn, we get this chronic stress because we are stressed out way too much and for way too long. And one thing all of this stress has in common is it's gonna change our breathing. When we're chronically in this fight and flight mode, we're chronically breathing quicker and shallower breaths. And that means that we're chronically losing too much CO2 and in a condition called hypocapnia. Our body has this sort of neuroplasticity where it can kind of adapt to different situations and change. And even though a new situation is not ideal and not what you're supposed to be doing, if you keep doing it, then your body's gonna think it's the new normal. So you have to sort of train your body to get out of that not ideal circumstance and get back to what's healthy. So when people say they need to go to an oxygen bar, usually the issue is not that they have hypoxia, it's that they have hypocapnia. I personally think that very few people would benefit from oxygen therapy. And most of them would benefit from simply changing the way that they're breathing. And the key is to really slow down your breathing. And breathing correctly only comes down to two things. It's using your nose to breathe and using your diaphragm. When you engage those two things when you breathe, you're gonna be breathing correctly. So breathing through your nose is simply gonna be a lot better for you. There's a lot of benefits that you get from breathing through your nose that you do not get from breathing through your mouth. And this is also gonna help slow your breathing down. And also engaging your diaphragm is super important too because this is gonna be what helps fill your entire lungs capacity with air. It's gonna help distribute that carbon dioxide across all of your lungs and it's gonna help you breathe very efficiently. So I did make some other videos on how to properly breathe and how you can engage your nose and your diaphragm when you're breathing. So I'm gonna put a link to those videos in the description below, so make sure you check those out. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. And I will see you guys in the next video.